California, home to the largest state population in the country and the ninth largest economy in the world, with an enormous diversity of resources, cultures, and opportunities. California has also been a leader in education with early high school development and an extensive network of colleges and universities. In 1913, CalSTRS was founded with 120 retired members and 15,000 active members. 100 years later, CalSTRS has grown to represent secure retirement futures, providing retirement, disability, and survivor benefits for 862,000 educators and their families. Over the past 100 years, CalSTRS has not just kept pace with California's evolving history, we've been an important part of that history. The year 1913 marked the completion of the world's largest aqueduct, supplying water to millions and enabling explosive growth within the Southern California region. On July 1, 1913, the state of California first established the Public School Teachers Retirement Salary Fund, later known as CalSTRS. And this fund was created in order really to offer a little bit of uh, incentive and long-term job security, really, for people to go into the teaching profession. Initially, teachers contributed $12 a year uh, to the fund, and the state of California um, provided 5% of the inheritance tax revenues to the fund. And that's, that's the entire way that CalSTRS was funded for, for decades, really. The leadership at CalSTRS understood at the outset that the key to success would be the organization's ability to adapt and meet the needs of an ever-changing teacher population. The 1930s brought tremendous change to California that enabled it to open up to the country and the world. The Bay and Golden Gate Bridges opened within a year of each other, providing much-needed gateways to Northern California. Route 66 from America's heartland delivered 10,000 new settlers to California each month. The CalSTRS system was a very stable system in terms of both uh, contributions and the benefits for, really for decades. In uh, 1935, uh, this began to change when teachers were required to increase their contribution level from 12 to $24 per year. School districts, for the first time, began contributing, and initially uh, they contributed only $12 a year per member. And the benefit levels went up uh, 20%, but that was about from $500 a year to $600 a year for teachers. So very modest uh, increase in contribution and a modest uh, benefit increase as well. In the 1940s, California drove innovation relating to transportation, business, science, and governance. California's first freeway, the Arroyo Seco Parkway, opened in Los Angeles. In 1944, the first of several major innovations were made to CalSTRS plan to enhance member benefits. Disability benefits were improved, and all retirees with 30 years of credited service were guaranteed a minimum retirement benefit of $60 per month. Age 63 was established as the normal retirement age, with specified reductions for early retirement beginning at age 58. Vesting was reduced from 30 years to 10 years of service. During this same period, the Public School Teachers Retirement Salary Fund also underwent a name change to become the State Teachers Retirement System. In the 1950s, California experienced an economic boom that produced greater prosperity, increased support for school funding, and an expansion of leisure opportunities. California also introduced a sales tax designated specifically for education. Disneyland televised its grand opening. Sports fans witnessed the first Major League Baseball game on the West Coast, and the minimum wage was put into effect at a dollar an hour. Throughout the 1950s, CalSTRS also launched a major expansion of benefits to better serve its membership. The normal retirement age was lowered from 63 to 60, and the early retirement age from 58 to 55. 
the first death benefit program was established. In 1953, the minimum retirement benefit was raised from $60 to $170 per month. Beginning in 1956, benefits were calculated based on a fixed percentage of final compensation for each year of credited service, tying benefits to changing economic conditions rather than fixed dollar values. In 1958, vesting was reduced from 10 years to its present five-year minimum. In 1959, the first survivor benefit was established. While the 1960s brought no meaningful change to CalSTRS, the 1970s in California was a decade of significant transition. Like much of the country, California experienced multiple challenges, including increases in population, pollution, unemployment, and inflation. Apple, based in the Bay Area, successfully marketed the world's first personal computer. A Paris wine tasting judged California wines to be superior to French wines, significantly boosting Napa Valley's status. Proposition 13, a landmark measure, changed the way government captures and allocates tax dollars. In the 1970s, CalSTRS experienced significant change and improvement to the way contributions were set and how it manages its investments. In 1972, the individual member contribution rate was changed from a variable rate averaging 7.4% of an educator's salary to a flat 8%. The employer contribution rate was also increased from 2% of a member's salary to a matching 8%. Literally for decades, CalSTRS was invested in uh, what are called fixed income investments. So there was really a, a modest uh, revenue stream in, into the fund um, based on those investments. When Proposition 6 passed, uh, it allowed CalSTRS to begin investing the fund in literally in the stock market and also in real estate. So there, there was, a, and this was a time when the stock market was doing really well and it, it made sense. Let's try to, to have a, a better revenue stream for this fund that's helping to, to pay the retirement uh, salary, really, for, for public school teachers. The 1980s saw California assume greater responsibility as a global influence on social and environmental issues. California introduced the Smog Check program, which set new standards for controlling vehicle emissions and also mandated seat belts for all drivers and passengers. The HIV AIDS epidemic was first clinically observed by medical professionals in San Francisco. To protest apartheid, California state funds sold 11 billion in investments in companies that did business in South Africa. During the 1980s, CalSTRS also assumed greater responsibility by adopting a more comprehensive investment strategy. In 1982, the legislature decided that the CalSTRS portfolio should have its own investment staff and it separated us from PERS and moved us independent. They hired their first chief investment officer and very quickly moved the entire portfolio out to external managers. So unlike most plans that were started internally, we were a plan that was started with external management. CalSTRS also developed a three-year management plan to maximize its rate of return while maintaining prudent investment practices. There was also a shift to stocks, making domestic equities the largest asset category in the portfolio. This strategic move paid off handsomely during a period of time in which stocks had one of the highest rates of return in market history. In 1987, CalSTRS expanded into real estate for the first time. It purchased the headquarter building on Folsom Boulevard as its first initial real estate investment. And from there, it grew into core real estate across the United States. In the late 80s, CalSTRS also started to invest in private equity for the first time. And so by the end of the 80s, the portfolio was very broadly diversified into a number of asset classes. In 1988, the CalSTRS investment portfolio was valued at $30 billion. The 1990s brought the birth of the World Wide Web, and California exploded with entrepreneurial vigor to leverage this new global information network. Google was born and launched by two students from Stanford University. The California Fuel Cell Partnership, a public-private venture to demonstrate fuel cell vehicles, formerly began. 
CalSTRS entered the 90s, recognizing the growing global makeup of the investment universe in its efforts to produce higher returns in the emerging global economy. By the end of the decade, CalSTRS had exceeded $100 billion, and even more importantly, for the first time in its entire history, it became fully funded. The portfolio had achieved a remarkable level of growth by adding $70 billion in value over the course of the decade. The 2000s proved to be extremely challenging for the country, California, and CalSTRS. The decade was marked by the 9-11 attacks and recession at the beginning, and a financial collapse at the end. From 2000 to early 2003, U.S. stocks dropped 45% in value. However, as a result of broad diversification, CalSTRS portfolio only declined about half of that amount. In 2002, investment staff aggressively rebalanced the fund's asset allocation, investing more than $1.6 billion at near market lows. By the end of 2003, the portfolio had rebounded to over $100 billion in assets. In response to the market volatility, CalSTRS adopted a more aggressive stance in corporate governance and activism. Working with other funds, CalSTRS advocated significant changes at the Securities and Exchange Commission, the New York Stock Exchange, and in corporate boardrooms. Recognizing the growing importance of better understanding long-term risks to the investment portfolio, CalSTRS became one of the first U.S. pension funds to be a signatory to the United Nations Principles for Responsible Investment. During the decade, the investment staff worked tirelessly to help rebuild the portfolio. And in fact, in 2007, we posted a 21% return, which placed us in the top 1% of all U.S.-based pension plans. And the portfolio closed at a high value of $175 billion. But then we encountered the financial meltdown of 2008. In September 2008, the financial world changed. Global financial stocks began a free fall in price, and in just 55 days, the U.S. stock market dropped 42% in value. While not as dramatic, the CalSTRS portfolio also experienced a significant decline. However, by the end of 2010, the U.S. stock market had significantly rebounded from the low of March 2009. The CalSTRS portfolio had been repositioned in anticipation of a change, and the fund grew to more than $140 billion in assets. This momentum made CalSTRS the largest educator-only retirement fund in the world. When I hear CalSTRS, I think of long-term security. I think that my retirement will be taken care of, that um, I am in good hands. CalSTRS is a part of being a teacher, is that a certain percentage of your income goes towards your retirement benefits. When I finally do retire, I plan to write and travel, and my CalSTRS benefit, coupled with other savings plans I have in place, will be the cornerstone of that retirement. And we're so, so thankful to CalSTRS that there is something there for us to take care of us. In 100 years of service to California's educators, CalSTRS has never missed a payment, even during the Great Depression. It's this solid commitment that generations of educators have come to depend upon. Today's challenges offer us opportunities to respond to changes in everything from our climate to evolving business practices and new technologies. CalSTRS is developing ways to meet the funding needs of the system balanced with responsible investments. Strength in long-term value creation, promoted through environmental stewardship, diversity, and recognition of human rights always guides our efforts. CalSTRS was founded upon the principle that hard-earned retirement benefits recognize decades of classroom service. This principle has remained a constant throughout our history and sustains our business model both now and for generations to come.